Welcome back to the Big Bang. Here we'll discuss the drawing of block diagrams for a second order system, or in this case, a biosystem. You would most likely encounter this task in a biosystems controls class or when exploring the dynamics of a system in a control systems class. I have written out here the system of equations that we will be working with today. In the second equation, you should notice f as a function of time t. f here represents our force input function. So we are applying a force onto the system and getting two things out of it. u as a function of t, representing the displacement or deflection of the system, and v as a function of t, representing the speed of the system. Meanwhile, a, b, c, d are constant parameters in the system. These parameters do have physical meanings though, and it would be good practice to explore what those would be in your system. A hint for you here is that the units of these parameters are always great indicators of what their physical meanings would be. Just by looking at the second equation in the system, we should be able to tell right away that this is a nonlinear system. The term involving the displacement as a function of time t, the displacement or deflection, changes sinusoidally through the hyperbolic sine function. So the ODE is not a linear function for the state variable u sub t. It, it is also worth noting that under steady state conditions, the terms on the left hand side of both equations, the u dt and the v dt, would equal zero. You can use this reality to find the steady state values of the state variables u and v given a certain steady state input f. Now that we have clarified the system, let's dive into it. Every system that you encounter will tell you a story. We use block diagrams to draw out these stories. I promise you that after you do this just a few times, you will be telling a bunch of stories very easily. We will start with our input force, which is a part of the second equation. This input force is multiplied by parameter letter d. So we can draw an arrow connecting the input force to a gain block d. The term d times f sub t is one of three terms that added together make dv over dt. So we can add a summation right after d. We will incorporate the other terms to the summation shortly. But like I said, the summation adds up to dv dt. So we can safely assume that the output after the summation is dv dt. Although I wrote dv dt here, note that this is just to help visualize our navigation through the design of the block diagram. You do not necessarily need to visually identify dv dt here every time. Now that we have reached dv dt, if we incorporate an integrator block right after the summation, the new output will be the speed, v, as a function of t. We have now reached our first state variable v. You probably already see how to get the second state variable from here. By adding another integration block shortly after, we integrate the speed, v, and get our displacement, u, as a function of t. We have drawn out a block diagram from input to output, which is a great start, but we are not done yet. Another term that contributes to the summation is the parameter a times the speed v as a function of time. We can then take v sub t from the output after the first integration block, connect it to a gain block valued at the parameter a, and send that into the summation. Note that there is a minus sign associated with the term. You can actually note that in the summation block on your diagram and also on software such as Simulink. We have one term left to add to our summation, our nonlinear hyperbolic sine term. This term is driven by the state variable u sub t, which happens to also be the output in our block diagram. We also already know how to get that variable. Let's take from the first integration block output a third time and connect it to a second integration block to get u sub t again. The u sub t is multiplying parameter letter c, so let's connect this output to a gain block valued at c. We can now carry this output through a static nonlinear activation block with a transfer function y equals a hyperbolic sine of x. 
This transfer function will use c times u sub t as the input x of the hyperbolic sine function. We will then connect the output from this transfer function block to a gain function block valued at parameter b, which gives us the final term for this equation. We can now connect that to the summation as a negative term and voila, we got our block diagram. I encourage you to replicate this block using Simulink to explore the system's dynamics. You will find that this is like a more robust game of building blocks, where the equations give you the instructions on how to connect everything. I want to stress that there are multiple ways to draw block diagrams of the same system. I showed you one of them here. However, you can mix and match blocks and end up with the same system representation, which is a really fun aspect of designing these. You can make them as complicated or as straightforward as you wish. I hope you had fun and learned a bit in this video, and I will see you next time.